Hey everyone, I'm back with another free widget for you, and this one again is inspired by an Apple website. And to be honest, I'm I'm a bit behind the curve here. Uh, I was fascinated by this when uh, I believe it was the MacBook Air came out, and when you scroll down to look at the battery life, the battery life counted up from zero instead of just being uh, the number I believe nine. It was nine hours of battery life. Uh, so I've created a widget that allows you to animate stats, and if I scroll down here. When we get to these numbers, see those numbers animate and climb up to the number that you specify. And uh, you'll notice that they started when I got to a certain scroll position. So uh, it's actually not using the built-in scroll position features of Adobe Muse, but uh, it's using a very similar uh, built-in feature that I've built into the widget itself. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back to Muse here. I'm going to go to the bottom. You can see that I've actually dropped this widget in here three times because I've got three separate numbers. You can use one, you could use three, you could use ten, doesn't matter, whatever you want to do. I designed this widget so you could use multiple uh, of them on a page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by deleting the last number here so I can drop it in and show you guys how this works from scratch. So I'm going to go over to library and for those of you who don't have the widget yet, go to museresources.com, go to library widgets, and when you go to library widgets, it's uh, it's the first one, dead center here, uh, the stat animator, and go download that. And then once you download it, double click it and get it into Muse, you'll have stat animator here on your library panel. So I'm just gonna drag that in, and when I drop it, it's gonna give me a box. You can change the size of this box, you just wanna make sure that the box is big enough uh, at least wide enough that the number is going to fit in it when it's counted up. So it starts at zero. They all start at zero and they count up to the desired number. So uh, if we click on this little triangle here to bring out the uh, in widget user interface, it allows me to change the number, number to count two, and uh, I'm going to change that to a higher number here, higher than 100. Uh, I'm just going to do maybe like, I'll do 7200. Cool. And then prefix, which is optional, allows you to put like a dollar sign. Over here you can see this middle number has a dollar sign in front of it. And you might be thinking, why does that have to be part of the widget? Why does a suffix have to be part of the widget? Uh, the reason is that as the number expands from zero, which is one digit, to ten, etc., which is two digits, to the hundreds, to the thousands, it's going to get wider. Uh, and this can be left aligned, it can be right aligned, but for those of you who are going to center align it or right align it, the uh, dollar sign, the prefix, would have to move. And for those of you who are going to left align or center align, the suffix, like uh, the percentage sign here, that would have to move to get out of the way as the number gets bigger. So it has to be part of the widget. So I've built that in uh, so that way you guys don't have issues overlapping with, a, with an adjacent text box containing a prefix or a suffix. So that's all taken into account and built into the widget here. Uh, so we've got number to count to established. I'm not going to put a prefix or suffix on this number because uh, it's current members. So I'm just going to leave it at 7200. Uh, and we're going to go down here to transition duration. Now, this is totally up to you. This is how long it's going to take for it to count up. And then there are easing styles to choose from if you want it to uh, animate in a more gradual way or if you want it to just like snap right up to the number. So transition duration here, uh, let me just show you what I'm doing. Uh, this middle widget here, I've got at 1,000. And the widget over here on the left, I've got at 2,000. Uh, the reason for that is this is a small number, this is a medium number, and this is going to be a big number, so I'm going to make this 3,000. So I have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Now, that's just going to make it take three seconds. 3,000 milliseconds is three seconds. Uh, this is going to be one second, this is going to be two seconds, this is going to be three seconds. Uh, so by doing that, the biggest number takes longer to count up, which in my opinion gives the number a little more weight and makes the number seem uh, like a greater increase uh, or, or that the increase is more of a, a grandiose achievement. So if it happens too fast, it just looks, uh, it looks too easy. And I want people to be able to focus kind of on one number at a time. I think uh, that leads the eye in a way that's more interesting. So I'm going to leave this at 3,000 so it takes the longest and finishes last. And I'm going to leave the easing style on ease in and out. Uh, another cool one that I've put in here is overshoot, where the number actually goes up and over and then comes back down, which isn't good for everything because sometimes people are going to be upset that the number came back down. Uh, but for some things, it can add a little bit of visual interest. I'm just going to leave this on ease in and out. And now start position. That is very important. This is like with the parallax scrolling features of Adobe Muse where you have to decide, when is this going to happen? Is it going to happen immediately when the page loads? Uh, no, 
that would be terrible because we can't see the numbers yet when the page loads because we're at the top and they're at the bottom. So I've taken this into account in the widget and I've allowed you guys to choose when this is going to happen, when it's actually going to animate. Uh, I've already established these two, so I should probably do the same here. And uh, let's see what this one says. So this one says 1500. So why 1500? Where did I get that from? Uh, if I scroll up so that the numbers are just at the bottom of my screen here, uh, if we look at the ruler, the vertical ruler on the left hand side, it's showing how many pixels down the top of my screen is. So when the top of my screen reaches around 1500 pixels, that's when the numbers come into view. It's actually a little bit higher than that, that they begin to come into view. Uh, so I could do 1400 or 1450. You could see up here on the ruler it says 1400 and the numbers have already come into view. And this is going to change depending on the screen. The one thing you just want to be sure of is that it happens when someone can see the numbers. Uh, and that it happens uh, if I mean if you're erring on the side of caution before they quite get there versus not being able to get there uh, because they can't get down far enough to trigger it so for instance uh, when I go to the very bottom and I can't go any further see how it says 1800 on the ruler here if I had these set on 1800 I wouldn't be able to hit it I can't go down far enough to hit 1800 so when in doubt make your trigger point higher up so 1500 it's going to be for these on my page so start position 1500 zero, zero. There we go, so 1500, nothing visually changes because it's just a matter of triggering it uh, once the page is loaded. But the other thing you'll notice is that it's blue and it's the wrong font. If I click over here, this is open sans bold, it's 60 point and it's white and it's centered, which this is already centered. But uh, one of the coolest things about this widget is it's completely customizable using the text panel that's built into Muse. You don't have to go and, and do any crazy stuff to, to make it work. So I'll do open sans here, uh, open sans bold, I think it was. Close enough if it's not. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that and change the color. And you could also change the alignment, you could change the spacing, you can change the uh, text size, but it looks like I'm all matched up here. So let's go and preview this in the browser. I'll do Shift Command E to preview in the browser. I'm on a Mac. If you're not on a Mac, it's Shift Control E, I believe. So now as I scroll down, Watch when we get to the numbers. I'm going to go slow here so we can just see them. See? So they haven't started yet, but when I reach that 1500 pixel mark, there we go. That triggers the animation, and that begins, and this finish last because it had the longest duration. So it's totally customizable. You guys can make this work for whatever purpose you're using it for. Um, I think this is going to be a very useful widget for a lot of people because uh, a lot of times stats and numbers and stuff are boring. And if you want them to be front and center or if your client wants them to be front and center, this is a much more impressive way to, uh, to do that and to display them. So I hope you guys like this widget. Go and download it for free from museresources.com. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will have more great stuff coming soon as well as this as a template and a lot more templates. I'm going to start uh, hammering out templates for you guys because I know that you guys want that and some of you don't have time to always be starting from scratch. So uh, keep an eye on the template section of museresources.com. <laughs> museresources.com. It's going to be expanded very shortly. All right, guys. Take care.